Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, video broadcast. I am coming to you live from my home. Uh, my name is Corinna Bench. If you're new to the group, I want to say welcome. Um, and today, our topic is going to be, I think, a really interesting one. We are going to be talking about the top 10 words of advice from past and current CSA members. So I'll just give our community a chance to start tuning in. Um, hopefully we'll get some people who can watch. You know it's probably around dinner time. Maybe you're taking care of homework with your kids. I know we were about to do that. Um, so I'll try to keep this to like 20 minutes and get through these real quick. So give me a shout out when you're here. Say hi, Kurt. Farmer Kurt is behind the camera again today, Manning the camera and he will um, take care of any questions that you might have during our time together. Hi Allison, hope the spaghetti was delicious. Is that Metzger? Mm -hmm. Hey Allison. So my kids are out and about in the house and I have coached them to uh, try not to disturb mommy but um, you never know what might happen on live TV so <laughs> be patient with us and you'll get to see them maybe if you're lucky. So. Um, again, today's topic is going to be the 10 words of wisdom, the 10 words of advice that come directly from our CSA members. So what happened was that at the end of last season, I sent out a customer survey to my whole CSA membership. And I had about 10 questions that I asked them. And one of them was, hey, if you had three words of advice that you could give to a new person coming into the CSA, what would you share with them? And the responses that I got were so fun. Um, and I have compiled a lot of those and put that, use that information to create this list that I'm gonna go through with you today. Now there was, there were a lot of suggestions. I kind of tried to pick the, the 10 most frequent ones that I saw or the ones that seemed to have some, you know, really good, some teeth to them that I could really talk about. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Um, because you see, those people, my, my current customers, they know, they know the journey that you may um, be starting to embark on here soon with us. And so they're the perfect person to pick their brain and ask, okay, what were some of the things you wish someone had told you, you know, that first season that would really kind of keep you from making some of those um, early mistakes? Or, you know, what are some tips of an advice to, to really maximize your share? So we're going to walk through those right now um, the list is actually much bigger than 10 tips and so what I thought would be fun for you is I made um, a cheat sheet a little freebie I think it's three or four pages long a PDF and you can download the entire file so all of the advice that they shared with me I kind of took some liberty and fixed the grammar and and kind of made it all easily read but all of those responses are in a document if you want to get that you can get that at sharedlegacyfarms.com slash advice a-D-V-I-C-E, and it's kind of a fun thing to look at. I think there's a lot of really good gems in there that I couldn't get to today. So let's just jump right in. Again, feel free to comment, or if you have a question that comes out of this, let me know, and I will, hopefully Kurt will say something. Um, I will say as, something, yes. Hi, Jamie. All right. This is so weird to see myself on a camera live. So anyway, tip number one. Um, Make sure you store things right or you will waste a lot of food. So make sure you store things right or you'll waste a lot of food. That came up a lot. Um, and we could probably distill this down to two primary storage no-nos that showed up in the, the survey results. Number one was the greens go bad quickly, so eat those first. You're going to want to know that. And number two, this one's kind of fun, take the tops off the carrots as soon as you can or you'll get rubbery carrots. That one's kind of fun too. So definitely those are probably the two big storage tips um, that you need to remember um, to, to really watch those greens and because they'll go bad quickly, you want to eat those early on in the week and then take the tops off your carrots. So the truth is that your veggies um, will store, will not, will, will rot more quickly if they aren't stored in the proper location. And so that's why it's one of the first things that we, we, that we go over and that we teach you. Um, once you're starting the season in the CSA, we, we're going to do a really good job of that this year. 
Um, and since we know this is kind of a hot spot for first timers, um, we have a really good strategic plan um, to, to teach it. So um, you need to buy as much time as you can to be able to use all the stuff for your meal planning that week. So we're going to make sure you know what you need to eat first so that you can use it all. Okay, tip number two. <clears throat> ask yourself, this comes from our members, ask yourself what can we make for dinner instead of what do you want for dinner? I think I've mentioned that before in another, in another video if you've been watching some of these with me, but um, this takes some getting used to. Uh, I really love how they worded that because I'd never heard it worded that way. Um, but it, they're spot on. Um, <clears throat> if someone doesn't warn you about this principle, it can kind of take you by surprise the first year. So just really take a look at how you're currently making decisions about what you want to eat every day. Do you decide last minute? Do you plan way ahead? Um, do you kind of go with the flow? Do you have an agenda? Do you open up a cookbook and a magazine and you see broccoli soup and you're like, I want broccoli soup even though you don't have any broccoli in your fridge? I mean, is that the way that you eat? So kind of want to ask yourself that. Because what CSA offers is kind of more of a fun adventure. Um, you get to open up a box that has a variety of stuff and then you just kind of have to figure out how to put a meal together. And that takes a skill set that you develop over time. Um, and our CSA will attract people that like to eat that way. If you're not um, able to eat that way or you haven't quite mastered that yet, that's okay because you will get a lot better at it um, the more you work on it. So. Farmer Kurt, that was a question. Yeah, for me, weren't we sort of that way when we first started eating the CSA way? We had like a certain, like maybe four or five meals were our go-to meals. Yeah. And we ate around those meals. We we eat around the actual box. Yeah. Why so how, how do we, how do we eat now? I mean, what, what's what's changed? For our family, what's yeah, changed? Yeah. For our family. Um. So now I go to. I don't really go by recipe anymore, even though I have all these recipe binders. I used to open those up and write down like the five things we were going to eat that week and then I would make a list and go to the store. And now I just kind of go to the store and I find, sometimes I find what's on sale or I see, oh that looks good and I bring it home and then every day around three o'clock um, I go, what are we going to make? And I look at what's on my fridge, I have all the inventory listed on my fridge and I kind of run it through this grid, through this um, list of meal templates that I have. And I sort of say, oh, well, I can make that, I can make, you know, tonight we had fried rice. Is it, we just went for a walk. I was telling Kurt like two hours ago, I have no idea what we're making for dinner. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I came home and I kind of put that through my little template meal grid and I decided, oh, I can make a fried rice out of this. I can just throw all the stuff in there and that's what we had. So that's a skill set that it took me several years to develop. Um, and, and so I'm kind of hoping to share some of those, those uh, tips and tricks that we've learned from our members with you guys. Did I hit that pretty good, Kurt? Yes, you did. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So that was that was your question. Yes. That was sneaky. Okay. Tip number three, learn how to freeze things. This comes from our members. Learn how to free, freeze things to use later in the winter. If you haven't used it by day four, freeze it. Okay. That's something very specific. Um, a lot of times people will be like, oh yeah, I know I can freeze it, I'll just, I'll just get to it later, and then you know, day five, day six, day seven comes and it's gone bad. So if you haven't used it by day four, freeze it, because you're probably not going to get to it. Um, and the next box comes, you know, on day seven. So you will undoubtedly fall prey to, to this, you know, this issue of your box getting away from you. And this is a great, great exit strategy. Just about everything we give you in your box can be frozen. Sometimes it has to be blanched first, so there's a little bit of a step, but that, that will teach you how to do that and it's really fast. Um, but just about everything can be stored away. And I know that a lot of our customers do this. Actually, Mike Metzger was just at our house this evening and, and we were trying to give him some of our garlic and he's like, I don't need that garlic. I still got tons of it frozen from last year. So, I mean, he was doing that. Uh, and I know a lot of our customers do as well. Um, so we're going to teach you lots of different exit strategies um, early on in the season for how to how to move produce if it's still in your fridge. But freezing is a really, really great one. Um, I do want to mention too that that one of the things that you get as in, in just about every CSE, I think this is pretty standard, you'll get a list of recipes for what to do with your stuff, but you're also, for us, you're going to get, from us, you're going to get a cheat sheet every week that's got all the items, kind of a, a picture of every item that's in your box. And then next to it, some text that will talk about, hey, here's three quick uses that you can make with this. Not like full out recipes, but like three ideas for what you can do with it. It'll 
give you a, a quick reminder of how to store it and then a quick reminder of how you could freeze it so that you don't have to go back and through all the ebooks and find the information or go on Google. It's just all there on one document. And that's kind of a like a fun, easy, fast resource to, to help you learn. Hey, can I freeze this? And if I do want to freeze it, how do I do it? All right, tip number four. Um, trial and error is a part of this. Expect some mistakes. This came up not like exactly worded like that, but this the gist of this came up quite a bit, and so I thought it was a good one. Um, I think sometimes a lot of our new customers come in expecting um, to be really awesome at the CSA strategy right away, and there are some some of you will be really awesome at it, um, but not all of you will be. And so whenever you know when you when you try to cook something new or with, with a new vegetable you've never seen before, like a garlic scape or an eggplant, well, eggplant's not a good example, but. Um, broccoli leaves you know you're gonna be like what the heck do I do with this and then it may not taste good the first time around and then you you might feel like oh man what did I just do but you have to realize that that failure and mistakes if you want I don't even call them failures but mistakes always lead to blessing I mean that's kind of a principle that I believe in just in general and in, in life um, and it's it's also true in cooking so every mistake is an opportunity to learn and figure out a better way to do it so you should expect there to be mistakes and and every time it happens you're going to get stronger and stronger um, at cooking so really go into the season with um, you know with the attitude of where you're going to embrace the adventure you're going to be willing to take a few hits to get to the finish line so all right <clears throat> tip number five keep it simple our members say keep it simple meal prep does not have to be fancy or time consuming Veggies can be prepped quickly and taste good with simple cooking methods. And then in parentheses, we had bake, steam, sauce, roast, grill with just a few spices. <clears throat> so I love this one too because, you know, we do this every year we do this photo, <clears throat> um, photo contest inside our private group and we encourage people for like a whole month they have a chance to submit photos of their food. And we always get, you know, these really gorgeous meals and, and where you're like, wow, that's how you eat every night. And, and I feel like sometimes I have to tell people, no, wait, wait, just because we have all these gorgeous, beautiful pictures of food, like that's not the expectation. That's probably how, not how most people in our, in our group eat. You know, most of, most of our members say we keep it simple. You know, we're just steaming or roasting or throwing a few spices on it to accentuate the flavors and getting a meal on the table quick. So that is their, their wisdom to you, like, hey, don't be intimidated, don't make this too hard, learn some of those really easy skills, or just use those really easy skills on the front end um, to, put a, to put a meal on the table. It does not have to be hard. So um, we do have a lot of people in our CSA who love to cook, who are going to spend several hours on the weekend, um, maybe an hour in the, um, on a weeknight, and they'll just bedazzle their dish, but, but a lot of people don't cook like that and can make a great meal. Um, real simply and real quickly and that's part of what the CSA experience is all about because I think we teach we'll, we'll be teaching like some of those basic cooking methods and how you can make a meal just really shine um, I think also kind of along with this veggie veggie overwhelm can paralyze people um, and so we really teach you some tricks for how to deal with veggie overwhelm um, Specifically, I'm going to share with you that flow chart that I use that helps me get unstuck. Like today, when I was walking the bike path with my husband, and I was, it was four o'clock, and I still didn't know what we were going to eat. And then I took a look at that that flow chart, and it showed me all the different kinds of meal categories. And I just sifted my my inventory through that, and I thought, oh, that's what that that sounds good, and I'll I can quickly whip that together. So we kind of teach you that, um, and that's all part of of the initial kind of orientation and training that comes with this membership. Um, tip number six, act quickly when you get home from pickup and store your vegetables properly. Deal with the most perishable items first. Um, oh my gosh, that's number one. I feel like I already said that. So maybe I'll skip this one because we, let's, we already talked about this one. Our CSA members have learned the hard way which vegetables need to, to be to kind of show up first in their in their playlist you know in their eating list of the week and so they make sure that those get prepped and get eaten first so those were the carrots so get rid of the carrot tops and then all those greens so you'll be eating a lot of greens and salads the first few days of your of your week after you get your box just kind of mentally prepare yourself for that that's kind of what has to happen and then the heartier vegetables happen later on in the week sorry that's like 
That was a double one. Okay, tip number seven. Try to learn the three basic uses of each vegetable. I love this tip and it's such a good one. Um, every vegetable we grow has at least three basic uses that you, can, that you can use it for. Could you make it into a salad? Could you turn it into a skillet meal? Could you make a sauce? Could it be a soup? Could it be a Tex-Mex meal? Those kinds of categories. And so, um, you know, researching and finding those, those three good basic recipes that you can use for any vegetable, that's a really great kind of goal to set for yourself um, over time in the CSA because then when you do get something and you get overwhelmed and you're not sure what to do with it you you know oh I've got at least three standby recipes that I that I can filter this vegetable through and it'll taste good so I know like for eggplant um, it took me a while because I wasn't a big eggplant fan but now I have actually I have more than three I have four or five that I have found um, that taste really good so if I get it in my box you instead of going oh what am I gonna make with this I can say, oh, I know of at least three recipes that I like with this, and I can go to one of those. Um, so I, I loved this tip so much that I actually built it into the ebook project that I'm working on this winter. So every vegetable, I'm writing an ebook for it, and part of the ebook has a section that says best uses. And so I list, you know, the the ten different things that you can types of things that you could make with that vegetable and I think that'll be a really easy thing to go to and at a glance just see oh you could pesto it you could soup it you could salad it you could put it in with um, grill it you could roast it you know you just sort of list those options for you tip number eight get those green bags they really do extend the life of veggies once things are prepped and cleaned and it will lead to less waste and frustration in the long run. So I actually brought them out for you in case you haven't heard me talking about these. I feel like I preach about green bags all the time. I am not an affiliate, okay? I get no, this is just no plugs. I just love them. So I always just get Debbie Meyer. I know there's different brands out there. Um, this is what they look like. They're green and they have different sizes. I have the one that has three different sizes in it, so this is a pretty big one. I could put like collard leaves in here or something, or kale leaves. And what you, this is made of a special polymer that absorbs the ethylene gas that plants give off once they're harvested. Um, well, actually they're always giving them off, but they give them off a lot more once they're harvested, and the ethylene gas is the reason why they start to rot and break down. So there are some vegetables, I'll do a whole video on this eventually, but there are some vegetables that are high ethylene producers, and there are some vegetables that are high ethylene absorbers. And um, instead of having you try to figure out and remember which one's which, it's just easier to stick the thing in a bag, and then this guy will help you take care of it, because he will absorb the ethylene from that vegetable, and it will keep the ethylene from building up and, and breaking down your your produce quickly so I'll put like bananas in here you know how bananas turn you know black in like three days sometimes I'll put bananas in here and they'll be good for I've had them be good for 10 days and they're still yellow or berries berries is another great one to put in here is they will not they will not go bad in a green bag lettuce you know I'll wash it and stick it in here dry it and stick it in here and it just stays forever and I don't have to eat my salad the first day so people step mentioned this over and over again in our survey um, hey, I really loved those green bags you told us about and I wish I'd found them sooner because they were a deal breaker So this is really cheap. I think this bag was like five or six dollars and I got Oh, how many are in here? There's a lot. It feels like there's 10 or 12 at least 20 There's 20 in here and I got this on Amazon. So this is definitely a good investment each bag you can use up to 10 times I think so you can wash them and reuse them. They're super Okay, two more. Tip number nine. If you're not sure what to do with something, almost everything can be roasted. This was another tip from someone, actually many people. Um, and you'll you'll find that we are gonna we're gonna talk about this in our training um, as part of the membership that roasting is actually one of the top vegetable exit strategies um, that we teach in our CSA. Just about everything can be roasted. It's really fast and it sweetens a lot of those vegetables that a lot of people sometimes go, oh, I don't, I don't want to eat that. So like a radish, if you, oh my gosh, like a radish roasted, totally different flavor than, than raw, totally different flavor. 
Um, turnips are another one. Completely different flavor. People who are like, ugh, I don't think I like turnips. If you try it roasted and it kind of like caramelizes it and it sweetens it, so good. So um, this is definitely a, a tip that I would say, yes, I agree, that's why I put it in here. Um, if you're not sure what to do with something, roast it. Um, our CSA coach, Katie Jardin, she's our registered dietitian, she's on our staff, and she's really gotten me into excited about using a spiralizer. She um, actually did a whole video on how to use the spiralizer. I don't know if you guys have a spiralizer um, in your house already, but it allows you to turn pretty much any vegetable into like a noodle, and and then you roast those noodles, you know, with some oil, olive oil, and and like boom, in like 20 minutes, it's ready to go, and it's really fun and crunchy and yummy. So, um, I don't know, maybe look into spiralizers. Number tip number 10. This is our last one for tonight. Read the newsletter ASAP, ideally before you pick up your box, so that you have time to think about ways to use the vegetables. Then look at the recipes to get ideas for what to make. Um, so this advice is all about being prepared. Uh, and I think a lot of our CSA members found that it really helped them to know what to do with the stuff if they put this discipline in place, if they took the time before they got their box to find out, to read that email, it's a short email every week, tells you here's what's gonna be in your box. And that just made them start thinking, like it just, they go to sleep on it, and you know, something happens overnight, their brain starts thinking, what can I do with that, what can I do with that? And then by the time they have to make a decision about what they're gonna make, or by the time they start actually doing some meal planning, if you're a meal planning type of person, they, um, they it doesn't take as long because they took the time to see what was there and kind of get their brain going. So we do send out, I think, a pretty killer newsletter every week um, that doesn't just include recipes but all kinds of other information. Um, but it does let you know what you're going to get in your box. It, uh, um, we also give you two meal plan tracks, one simple and one gourmet, so that can give you get you started. It kind of provides inspiration for you. Um, to think about what can I make with this. So if you're completely stumped, a lot of times our customers said, I went there and, and it got my, my mind spinning. And I may not have followed the recipe to the T, but um, it was a template that I used and then I kind of riffed off of it. Um, and you're also going to have access to all of those eBooks. Hopefully those will all be done by the time the CSA starts. And so that will also give you another place that you can reference for recipes too, or for vegetables that you don't know what to do with. Um, so read that newsletter and just find, get that list, that email of what's gonna be in my box. You'll be amazed at how just making sure you open that email every week makes a big difference in being able to use the stuff. Okay, well that's it. Kurt, did anyone ask me any questions? No questions, but thank you to Mr. Mike for joining, Miss Jody, Miss Kelly, and Miss Tracy as well. Love Glad to it. have you. Yay. Well, that's all that I have for tonight, and um, my little guy was trying to snuggle. That's all I have for tonight, so I will touch base with you this weekend. Kurt and I are going to do a Q&A, um, where he's going to be are? behind the camera. Yes, we are, honey. Oh, okay. um, and we're going to be taking questions from the audience, so if you have something that you want to ask us about anything, it can be anything, um, post that in the comments and we will try to address them. So far I only have one question, so I hope I get a few more um, so we have something to talk about. Otherwise I'm gonna have to come up with it. We'll make something up. We'll make, some, we'll make up some questions and yep. you won't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget that freebie. If you joined us late, um, I have um, a document, I think it's three or four pages, of all the advice that came from my customer survey last year. All the advice from our customers for new incoming rookies. I asked them the question, what are the top three things that you would tell uh, an, an incoming person to the CSA? What tips and advice and wisdom would you share with them that you wish someone had told you to make this all easier? And I got a ton of really good stuff and I just cut and pasted it, cleaned it up a little bit, put it into a document, and um, there's way more than 10. So I, I put that all in there. If you wanna see it, go to sharedlegacyfarms.com slash advice. A-D-V-I-C-E, and you can download it there. 
So if any of you guys, I don't, I think that all of you who are actually on right now have, have signed up, but if any of you um, are still on the fence or if you're thinking about joining our CSA, the cart is open. You can go and do that now. Um, and the sign up link is sharedlegacyfarms.com slash sign up. Um, but don't feel like you have to do that yet. If you still want some time, you're absolutely, this, we're going to be doing this for another month at least. So, um, but if you, if you think you're ready to make that move, go ahead and head on over to that link, sharedlegacyfarms.com slash sign up. So thanks for joining us tonight, guys. And I look forward to hearing some of your comments and questions for this weekend's live Q&A with Kurt. All right, take care. Have a good night. Thanks, folks. Bye.